It can be really hard to get a good idea of what's happening in the housing market. One minute you hear that the housing market's crashing or that there's a crash coming. The next minute you hear that prices are rising and it just seems to be all over the place, right? Well, I'm gonna add some additional context to that uh, here for you today. We're gonna talk a little bit about how the housing market crash might be over. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about six different talking points about what's happening in the market, why it's happening, and what's gonna happen with interest rates, inventory, homes, transactions, prices, and all of the things. So. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Cody Steck, your favorite Utah realtor. If you're a returning viewer, uh, thank you for your participation in this journey and on these videos. As always, guys, if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I would love to be your trusted real estate resource. Please reach out to me. My information is here on the screen. I love hearing from you guys. And I've had people from all across the world reach out to me about relocating here or even locals who already live here in the state who are interested in purchasing a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate. So thank you so much for doing that. Let's jump into this. So looking at my screen here, the housing market crash over question mark, right? Home sales gaining steam ahead of summer. This is the headline for this article here. The Salt Lake City metro area continues to be among the top housing markets in the US to see the most dramatic yearly declines in home sales since high interest rates chilled the market. So decline or uh, the number of transactions has come down substantially is what they're talking about here. Out of the 51 metros that were surveyed, a report shows a seasonal 20% increase in home sales over April, right? So they're saying for the month of May, home sales are up 20%, as well as an 8.7% rise in new listings. Most of that's seasonal. Of course, we're gonna see more listings going into uh, the summer months. And if we take a look over here, you can see that most of this information is actually just driven by the fact that April was a down month. This was primarily because interest rates here in March were climbing. They were hitting you know upwards of 7% or over 7%. And so that really caused a lot of downward pressure on the market here in April. So in April, 2023, we saw 2,951 home sales, which was down roughly, what is that? About 300 or 400 home sales uh, from March going into April. Now, this is not typical. If we go back and take a look at even just the last two years, you know, March to April, we usually see an increase right here. It increased about 400. And then in 2022, we only increased about eight sales, right? But it was still an increase month over month. Uh, looking at April, we did decline pretty substantially, but then rose up again uh, going into May. So this is mostly driven by interest rates in the market. It's not typical to see that drop, but thus, uh, that's why it's giving us uh, this information. Though the national median sales price is still down 1.9% from May 2022, it ticked up by 3.2% month over month to $423,000 this May. So again, they're basically saying, hey, prices were down right here, but then in May, it ticked up roughly 3%. The sizable jump in May home sales signals the start of the peak selling season, but lack of inventory remains the biggest challenge for home buyers in this market. That said, sales are still happening and experienced agents are still finding solutions for their buyers and sellers. Despite what you're hearing out there, they're still trying transactions that are happening. In fact, just this month, we've already had 2,187 home sales. And I've been fortunate to be a part of eight or nine of those transactions, which is going to be one of the best months I've ever had. We've had a ton of buyers, a ton of sellers who've come to me and said, Hey, Cody, I need to make a move. I need to do some real estate. Uh, can you please help me? And I'm so honored to be the person that gets to help them do that. It gives us a really good feel of what's happening in the market. So even if you're watching this video and maybe we don't get the chance to work together, at least you can go to and talk to your agent, make sure they're an experienced agent make sure they're getting a good feel for what's happening out there uh, so they can actually guide you and give you advice based on the market, not just what they're seeing individually. Because if you have an agent and they only do maybe two, three, four sales a year, they're not going to have a good handle on what's happening. You really need somebody who's doing multiple transactions per month in order to get a good sense of what's happening in the market. So let's continue on. Uh, there are still deals that are happening out there and uh, you know we'd love to help you if we can uh, during that journey. The Salt Lake City metro area was among the top five markets with the biggest year over year declines in closed transactions. So although prices have jumped up a little bit, the number of transactions that we see happening has come down pretty substantially. Uh, number one, you've got Seattle with a 33.9% uh, decline. Anchorage, Alaska, uh, which is down 32.5%. Portland, Oregon, roughly 32%. Honolulu, down 30%. And then right here, number five, Salt Lake City was down 29.3% uh, to 1,113 transactions in May, which is for the Salt Lake City metro. Even though the Salt Lake area's housing transactions are down from this time last year, Re, uh, Remax's report also shows an uptick in activity month to month. The 1,113 closed transactions in May are up 10.6% from April. Uh, again, that kind of is reflected right here. You can see roughly a 10% increase across the entire market from 2,951 sales to 3,388 sales in May. Lastly, 
for this article, the Salt Lake City Metro's median sales price is also on the incline month over month, hitting 525000 in May, uh, which is up 7.1%. Uh, from the previous month. Lastly, the 577,000 median price of a single family home reflected a nearly 8% rise from 535,000 in January, according to the Salt Lake Board of Realtors. If you go back again, looking at this information straight from the MLS, the median sales price across all home types here in uh, you know Northern Utah was 455,000. And right now we're sitting for the month of May, we're at 490,000. And even in June, we're sitting higher than that, just under 500,000. So a pretty substantial increase almost 10% in just about five or six months here. People are just kind of freaking out thinking, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Now interest rates are climbing. What if they go from 6% to 9%? People are just losing it. But now they've kind of stabilized, right? Over the last, let's say, six to eight months, interest rates have really kind of stabilized somewhere between that 6 to 7% range. And this is now just becoming a new normal. People are getting comfortable with it. They're adjusting and they're starting to accept the reality that if you want to buy a home, that's just what you're looking at in today's market. Number two on our list, inventory is still extremely low. We're still seeing a lot of people who would like to move. They'd like to sell their home and move up to something bigger, but they're faced with the reality of selling their home, paying a higher price for the next home, as well as giving up their 3% interest rate in order to get a new home at a 6% interest rate. And for a lot of those people, that just doesn't make sense. They're going to be increasing their monthly payment by so much that it doesn't make sense to make that move. In cases like that, those people are just sitting back, they're waiting, they're not making any moves, or if they are gonna make that move still, they're not going to sell their home, they're holding their home, they're gonna rent it out and just become a landlord. And this is what's called an accidental landlord. They don't necessarily want to be a landlord, but they end up choosing to be one because they don't want to give up that low interest rate on their home. I personally am a fan of this. I think this is a great idea. I think if you've got a low interest rate on a home, you should definitely hold on to that because it could be a very good investment vehicle. If every person out there just bought one extra house or rental property and held that until retirement, that could easily be your entire retirement savings just in that one house. And it'd be extremely easy to do so, especially if you're 20, 30, 40 years old, you can definitely do this. And I think it's a very smart move. Number three on our list here, rates could climb even higher. There was a recent meeting between uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell and Congress where Fed Chair actually said, hey, we could see interest rates for the Fed funds rate climb another 0.5%, so a half percent over the coming months to continue to battle this inflation that seems to just continue to stick around. If this happens, we will see upward pressure on mortgage rates and we could see those rates climb over 7%. So that's something you have to think about and um, you know take into your account on figuring out, hey, is this the best thing for us? Should should we buy now? Should we sell now? What should we do? You need to take that into account. Number four, anytime those interest rates or prices do drop, we're actually seeing a lot of people jump in off the sidelines and start to make a move into the market. And this is actually pushing the market up because now there's a lot of demand in that market. So even if prices come down five or 10%, we're going to see a lot of people jump in and take advantage of that. In addition to that, even if we see interest rates come down, let's say they come down a half percent, we're going to see a lot more people go out there, file for a mortgage application and start the home search process. Those people are then going to take advantage of that. And that's going to cause multiple offers to start coming in on these properties. In fact, on a lot of homes under the 500,000 range, we're still seeing multiple offers. Even at six, 700,000 on some homes, we're seeing multiple offers despite the high interest rates and despite saying, oh, everybody's thinking that things are overpriced. We're still seeing a lot of people who wanna buy homes in this market. Number five is demand, right? The demand is still there in the market. We're still seeing a lot of people who want to purchase a home. The jobs and opportunities that are here in Utah are bringing a lot of people into the state and people are taking advantage of that. So there's a housing shortage out there in just in general, and the state has not been able to catch up with that. They've said that we're somewhere between 20 to 30,000 housing units short of where we should be based on how much demand is out there. I don't suspect we'll catch up to this anytime soon, especially if people keep moving in and people here locally keep having kids that grow up and want to buy homes and stay and live here in Utah, I think that housing shortage is going to continue to persist for at least the next five to 10 years. Now, there's one more thing that I want to talk about here, and this one's going to be the most important of all. I don't hear anybody talking about this, but it's probably the biggest factor about what's going to happen in this market. You have to pay attention to this one thing. Before we talk about it, as always, guys, make sure to reach out to me. My information is here on the screen. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I want to be your trusted real estate resource to help you along that journey. Thank you so much for everybody who has reached out to me over the last little bit. I absolutely love helping you guys, and I cannot wait to hear from you who's watching right now. And also, don't forget to check out the newsletter before you go. There's lots of really good 
good information in there. So this last one we got to talk about is going to be unemployment. Unemployment is the biggest variable in today's market. I actually want to jump in my screen here and take a look at the unemployment rate here in Utah because this is sitting at very low numbers, right? So this is uh, the unemployment rate for states. This is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Some people out there will say, oh, this is not great information, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to worry about the conspiracies here. We're going to take a look at where Utah is sitting on an unemployment level, right? So we're ranked number seven here out of all 50 states. Uh, including DC, we're sitting at 2.3% unemployment. Now, this is not quite the 1.9 that we're seeing in Nebraska, New Hampshire, or South Dakota, but we still are a long way from the 5% that we're seeing in Nevada and District of Columbia. So I think if you took the average unemployment rate across the entire nation, you're probably sitting somewhere like 3.5% plus or minus. But if this stays low, if we continue to see 3.5% on unemployment, we will not see massive changes in home prices out there. Right now, prices have started to climb again. Even if they drop again, you might see January prices where we got down to like 450,000 on a median home price. But overall, unless unemployment goes to 7, 8, 9, 10% across the country, we will not see home prices drop. That's my prediction. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. You might have a different opinion, but that's my opinion here. I think that prices are going to normalize. They're going to stabilize. We're going to continue to see the home prices that we talked about here for all home types across the county. We're going to continue to stay around 450 to 525 for at least the next little bit, either until interest rates go up substantially or down substantially, or we see a massive change in the unemployment rate. So with all that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video make sure to reach out to me information down in the description box below as well as that newsletter we'll catch you guys in the next one